Hi. So, in section 8, we'll talk about Brion zone and uh, reciprocal lattice. And as a quick reminder, in the past section, we talked about the creation or the calculation of a 1D periodic potential with the aim, of course, to understand transport in semiconductors. What we did calculate is a Brion zone, uh, sorry, a periodic uh, potential structure where we have a band structure. We calculate multiple bands. And we'll explore that a little bit more now. So, in the ansatz for the solution is, that we took is we, we chained n atoms together, a large set of a number of n, and we knew from physical insight that um, the wave function should be the same as you close the loop through a periodic boundary condition. So that means the magnitude square of the wave function at the end of the chain should be the same as the magnitude square of the wave function at the beginning of the chain. And that means that the, we can modulate uh, this wave function with a phase factor. That phase factor is according to a, a, a lattice that is the uh, inverse lattice of the spatial lattice, the k-vector lattice. And we're exploring this a little bit more detail in this section here. So, um, what we did state very clearly that it, you have, say, four states per atom. And if you have n atoms, that means you get four bands and uh, n states in each band. And all the states are included in what we call the first zone. So we plotted the band structure in this form here from minus pi, uh, pi over L to plus pi over L. The states are separated by delta k of 2 pi over capital N L. So if you make capital N very large, the spacing of delta k becomes really small. All right. So the wave function is, can be invariant by a shift by a single unit cell. And that means that there is a periodicity in this uh, unit cell. and what that means is you can really represent all of the information in one single cell. If we plot, like here, the same uh, cell uh, as the neighboring cells, you can do that. It's sometimes handy to do some of that. But in principle, all of the information that is in the uh, case space representation is included in the, uh, in the first Brion zone. So that is what we call a Brion zone. We have a K lattice where we collapse an infinite or quasi-infinite periodic space into a discrete space. And we call that a reciprocal space. And the inner zone that, that represents all the information is the so-called Brion zone. Now, we, you've done mapping like this with a Fourier transform before. And I'm just going to review some items here to give you sort of an intuitive uh, a memory, so to speak, of uh, a Fourier transform. If you take a periodic function, like a cosine, you might remember that that maps as a Fourier, Fourier transform into two delta functions, a left and a right going plane wave. An individual plane wave maps into a single delta function that is shifted by the frequency of the wave and the frequency content of the wave. So a single wave has exactly a delta function of a frequency content and it has a certain amplitude. And a constant maps into a delta function. If you take functions like these, the rectangular function that is finite in space, like this, and where the x-axis or the goes to infinity, but it has a single step-like feature. You map that into, in Fourier space, into a sinc function, which um, is the sinusoidal decay function that looks like this. In my bad way of sketching, of course, it goes down like this. And but it is infinite in space. So this spatially um, finite um, function gets mapped into an infinite extent function in sinc uh, in the Fourier space. A, tridiagonal, a triangular function like this, also finite in, in space, where this might be the intersect A and A minus A, like so. 
uh, maps into the square sink function, and again, you go from finite to infinite. Um, there's other maps, for example, here, the complex exponential that decays to infinity like this. It maps into a Lorentzian that looks like this ballpark. And uh, you map infinite to infinite, and of course you remember that a Gaussian maps into a Gaussian. All right, you've done mapping of spaces before. So what we're doing here for a crystal is we know that a crystal has certain periods, with cer certain repetitions, certain unit cells, Bravi lattices, that are repeated in space. And it's useful to work in the reciprocal space or in the case space um, for calculating the spectral content of a variety of components of the crystal that we're interested in. All right. So what we did here in 1D is very similar to that. It's identical to that. We had a function f of x that was our wave function, and we said f of x must be the same as some um, function um, that is some some index away n of l. Okay, so we knew that the under uh, that the the underlying system we were interested in this function f uh, repeats itself, and it repeats itself by the underlying lattice. All right, so that infinite that underlying lattice is is conceptually infinitely extended, and we made it with a periodic boundary condition. We chose a system of plane waves, which are good solutions to the Schrodinger equation, and they map well also onto the um, the basis set for the spatial extension. All right, and um, here we solved the chronic penny model in one dimension, and we did that in the last section. And now we're going to look at uh, more details of two D problems and three D problems. Uh, as we expand from 1D. So again, the key concept of uh, to take away is that we collapsed a periodic infinite space uh, into a discrete space. And that discrete space allows us to look at a finite number of um, states, a finite number of spectral components. So in the next um, section, we'll look at the uh, reciprocal lattice in 2D. And I'll give you a recipe for 2D uh, um, structures, and we'll look at squares and hexagonal crystals.